uh, members of the public and um, staff. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us here today. Um, just uh, Mrs. Nian is the uh, internet broadcast on. It is indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kingy. Uh, would uh, would I, you mind me asking you to uh, give us a blessing for the day? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kingy. Item one, uh, apologies. I see we have a full house, so there's no apologies. Item two is um, a conflicts of interest. Any conflicts of interest pertaining to the items today? <coughs> no? Councillor? Okay, thank you, Councillor Body. Item number three will go to the confirmation of minutes. Uh, 3.1, the extraordinary... Uh, council meeting on the 17th of June, June 2020. Do we have any uh, clarification of those minutes? Or anything arising from those minutes? No, therefore, could I have a mover, please, for those minutes? Thank you, Councillor Leonard, se seconded by Councillor Williamson. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Item 3.2 was the ordinary council meeting on the 30th of June 2020. Any points of clarification on those minutes? No? Uh, could I have a mover for those minutes? Thank you, Councillor Westman, seconded by Councillor uh, Rankin. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Uh, 4.1. Exemption of destination uh, Great Lake Taupo, uh Limited uh, and data caption systems. And we have Alan Smiley. Good afternoon, Alan. How are you this afternoon? Good, thank you. Organisation and the costs and benefits if the exemption were granted. Now, Council has a couple of uh, shell companies that, that have no transactions. These are data capture systems and destination Great Lake Topo Limited. Um, they were exempted um, a number of years ago and it's required for us to review that exemption to see if it's still valid and um, decide whether or not to revoke it. Um, and um, the conclusion is that council should not revoke the exemption and should roll it over for another three years. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, I presume the word great goes in that. Oh no, just Lake. That's right. It's a limited company. Okay, That's correct, sorry. Yeah. Yep, sorry, Alan. All right, uh, pretty straightforward by the look of it, I think, um, Alan. Any questions of um, Alan? No? You're off pretty lightly? Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there's a recommendation there. Do uh, I have a move by Councillor Rankin, seconded by Councillor Taylor? All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Thanks very much, Alan. Thanks. 4.2, contract uh, TDC for the Tongariro uh, Domain Playground upgrade. Grade. And we've got uh, Mr Travis uh, Delich here. Good afternoon, Travis. Good afternoon, councillors. Mayor? Uh, okay, um, so this paper is... Uh, to pass an official resolution to sign the contract. Um, I've heard people sit up here and say, take the papers read, but as I understand it, um, it's not the most clear paper, so uh, apologies for that. I think it's um, it's a little bit of the complexity of the, the project combined with uh, me maybe not doing these papers all the time. So I have provided a uh, slide, a couple slides to go through, just to take you through the process to address any questions that you may have, and then I'm, I'm happy to take um, questions uh, after that, so okay, thanks, Travis. Think, um, who's up on? Ah, okay. Good. Uh, Here we are. 
Um, so as I go into the presentation, it's just a couple slides. I just thought I'd take you through the timeline of how we got to where we're at, um, and then uh, just explain uh, how we came to the per preferred supplier for the contract. Um, so uh, back in 2019, we started doing concept designs for the playground. Um, then in late 2019 to early 2020, uh, we ran a RFP, which was based on weighted attributes. Um, as part of that uh, process, we shortlisted um, some candidates who then presented uh, to the, the project team at the time. Um, I know there was some confusion about the, the amounts that were um, in the tender process. So at the time, um, Bespoke Fleur was selected um, as the preferred supplier, and I'll go into that in, in the other slide, and that was at a value of 809,771. Um, so that was that was what was in their tender submission. Since since that uh, tender was awarded, it was a design and uh, design and build tender. So we worked with them to to uh, complete a detailed design out of the concept design, and then there was the construction installation costs of actually doing the playground. So we've worked very closely with them to um, uh, to ensure that uh, we're delivering what the community wanted and um, do it within budget. So. Um, as part of that scope change in February, uh, we received a commitment for a $100,000 donation, um, which was very generous from the 100% Great Lakes Charitable Trust. Um, and, and as part of that, we shared the concept design with them, um, and it was uh, agreed at the time that with that money, we'd like to do something really special uh, with the playground, which is um, where some of the scope change uh, came in, where the, the big centerpiece uh, uh, came into the picture. Um, so that will uh, start highlighting some of the differences in costs that I have in my report. Um, then in March, uh, there was COVID, and we we uh, sat and waited for a while. Um, then uh, out in, in May and June, we uh, put out a survey and got uh, uh, quite a bit of feedback. I was in here and presented uh, last month, I think, on the feedback that we received. We took that, incorporated into the, into the design, and that's how we've come to um, the design as it is now with uh, the schedule of quantities that's in the contract, the types of things that we're ordering, um, et cetera. Um, and so that's that's the process I've been going through in June and July, uh, post that feedback. So in the, so the contract, the, the final schedule of quantities is $910,000. However, the request is for $950,000, and that um, allows us uh, $40,000 contingency, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually only 4%. Normally, we like to go into these with a contingency of about um, 10 to 15%. But because we've worked so closely with them, I think I think we're um, we're good with the 4% um, the contingency. So hopefully that explains why there's a difference um, between, uh, I suppose, the figures I put in the paper and um, the initial awarded tender. So it's essentially down to scope change. Um, uh, additional funds and requests um, as part of the donations, et cetera. So are there any questions on the timings? Oh, thank you, Travis. Yeah, that was um, good to put those in. I appreciate that because there was a little bit of confusion in the in the item. Um, any questions regarding the, the timeline of the year of Travis? Council sure, body? Not, not a question. Just in regards of your, your uh, you got up there January, is it bespoke filter should be in here? It just says be bespoke architects or landscapers. Uh, sorry, which which I if you look at tenders received. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I probably should have put. Well, Bespoke did the tender on, so they partner with Fleur to do to do the the contract work. But they're the, the design company, so they design, but they also manage the people that do the um, the installation of it. Which actually I, I get into in the next slide. Two companies under one contract, so Bespoke is essentially subcontracting. Name is one here. That was all. Okay. So that's correct in the recommendation there. Yep. Uh, Bespoke Fleur. Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. Any other questions of Travis? Oh. No? Okay. You, um, so thank you very much. Um, any other, regarding the other things in the agenda item, is there any, anything else anyone wants to query? Councillor Taylor. No, not a question. Just I wonder if, if in terms of the recommendation, we put it to a motion, we could change the $100,000 from donations to being specific, a donation from Lake Taupo Charitable Trust to acknowledge them up front in this meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Uh, good idea, Councillor Taylor, and perhaps a, uh, a number two, perhaps, <laughs> suggested, yeah. uh, is uh, we formally thank them uh, uh, for their for their very kind donation. So, a one and two, is that all right? Change Thanks for that, Councillor Taylor. Also, no, we are going to work with them to uh, ensure that we get the right recognition for their donation because it was very generous. Cool. Okay, we'll just make sure we encapsulate that in the, the resolution. Are you happy to move that, uh, Councillor Taylor? Yes? Good one. Thank you very much. Yes, one and two, and seconded by Councillor Guy. <laughs> um, you're all right, you sir? Have you got it there? That'd be cool. Thank you, uh, Travis. I think we've got had enough of your timeline. We'll just get that resolution up there just to make sure we've got it right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, we've got the words. Yeah. So, be moved by Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Kathy Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Travis. Right. Item number 4.3 submission on the draft navigational uh, navigation safety bylaw. Mr. Nick Carroll. Good afternoon, Nick. Afternoon, Your Worship and Councillors. Uh, this is a relatively straightforward item. As uh, Travis, my colleague, has noted, I'll take this as read, but happy to um, answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions on navigational bylaws? No? Um, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, it's not so much a question, more a comment. And I get the intent of this. Um, to provide some safety and as another step to prevent people from swimming where they do but it's like putting signs up on the side of the road it's only there for those who are prepared to accept and I just wonder whether this I'll, I'll acknowledge it is a step in the right direction but I wonder whether it is enough and we should be advocating for more physical barriers or other ways of preventing people from doing the inevitable because if we think that by simply passing a bylaw, it's going to stop people swimming down there. And as an aside, I was involved in this incident initially. Um, we're kidding ourselves. So I think this is a good step, but we need to go further if we're going to make that area safe. Yeah. Cool. Good comments. Um, Mr. Yeah. Green. So all I'll say is, <coughs> is that um, the Department of Conservation, who manages a lot of that land, did put barriers in instantly, so, so immediately following the incident, um, and the coroner obviously looked through the different elements and came up with a number of recommendations of which one was the one that, um, that Nick has referred to in the submission around the, um, the bylaw, so you're right, the bylaw isn't a be all and end all, but there, there were a number of recommendations of which this was one, so it's a, a part of the picture. Um, I guess what Waikato Regional Council have been hesitant to do to date is to put that despite having a coroner's recommendation, they've been very hesitant to put that in their bylaw. It's their bylaw that we're submitting to. Um, and so that's why uh, ourselves and other parties are, are suggesting that we submit to um, to put that on the record, that they, they should follow the coroner's advice and, and make that bylaw change. Cool. All right, yeah. uh, Councillor Williamson. Yeah, yeah, through the Chair, thank you. So just, you know, supporting Councillor Taylor's comments, obviously probably can never do enough, but um, obviously with uh, young people, you know, willing to take risks so it's obviously something it's a bit of a challenge but it's a bit like trying to fence off the, um, the lakefront you know the cliffs you know people still do sort of um, inappropriate sort of dumb things but um, as tragic as it was so but um, otherwise I think you know I think this this bylaw has sort of probably gone far enough in terms of you know trying to regulate what people do what they don't do but yep step in the right direction are you happy to move that uh, so the, uh, the recommendation up there is um, that we approve the submission. Um, moved by Councillor Williamson, seconded by Councillor Kingy. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Very good. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, 4.5, uh, uh, 4.4, sorry, is the draft. <laughs> 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 a 
adopting a, a, um, a draft transport strategy for consultation. Trying to stretch, trying, trying to stretch it out as long as I can, Aidan. So. <laughs> <laughs> now we're good to go. That's so, a wrap. Um, Aiden, the good afternoon. You'll see in the draft paper, in particular, some tables. They're quite long and wordy, um, but they like, highlight the changes we've made since this workshop. So if you're comfortable with those, we're hoping you'll approve that uh, we go out and talk to the public. Okay, Councillor Kingy. You go, Councillor. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, um, just a couple of um, comments. So totally supportive of our, our current train of thought around this and what we're hoping to achieve. Your Worship, I just wonder whether I could just um, add some other comments, and those have been uh, contributions that have been made by members of the community back in Turangi about the significant role that bus transport um, needs to play um, for the future growth, I suppose, of town. And that has been captured in, in multiple ways um, by the consultation that Aidan and co have had previously. But there are some very specific examples that are being put forward around um, uh, the, the, the current proposed uh, bus service or response bus service, and in particular the number of days that it may or may not operate. So I'd really be keen to see us reflect that and when we're starting to talk to the community or consult with the community that um, one of those specific things I'd like to um, see us ask is, is, is if there was a service of some description provided for from between Tudung and Taupo, um, you know, what are those, what are the common days, would you use it five days a week, something along those lines because we, I think you, you worship have received an email directly from some residents, I've certainly been engaged uh, in, in it. it's a very topical subject so just to add um, further context to the strategy, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kingy. Any other uh, Councillor Leonard. Um, I appreciate the changes that have been made um, in that strategy. There's just a couple of things. Um, in town, when we're at urban schools, we see the speed reduced to 40 kilometres an hour around those schools. Yet when I go to Tarahonga, Marotiri and Kuratau, our rural schools, it's still 100 kilometres an hour. I'm not sure whether rural children can run faster or whether rural <laughs> people can hit their brakes quicker um, to ensure their safety. There's also flashing lights around our urban schools that our rural children are not afforded the change. Um, also, just um, we talk about freight being moved on rural roads. Taupo's also a service centre for our rural communities, um, and rural roads are not just for freight. Um, they're there for health and safety, they're there for animal welfare, ensuring that our vets can get to us in a prompt and timely manner, um, for services and also for business continuity. Um, the amount of money that comes into GDP into our district from those rural communities is quite exponential and as I've said before, using one friend's example on uh, Broadlands Road that he pays $62,000 in rates, he supplies his own water, he supplies his own sewerage, he disposes of his own rubbish really the roads are the only service that we provide to him for his $62,000 per annum. Um, so they are service roads, not just freight roads. Good points. Thank you, Councillor Leonard. <coughs> Any other questions? Councillor Taylor. Yeah, just to provide some context around Councillor Leonard's comment on school zones. So from the regional transport committee meeting yesterday, you'll know there is, I'm assuming your team knows, there is a national conversation around school speeds, including on state highways, which we need to advocate with NZTA on, uh, just encourage in terms of the way forward that our draft transport strategy aligns closely with the regional strategy specifically around school speed zones, and there's nothing to stop us from moving those now rather than waiting for a national decision on that. Just noting that Tarahonga Road is an honest state highway, so it's actually ours, I believe. So through the Chair, that gives us the ability, if we were of a mind as a Council, to do that sooner rather than later. We don't need to advocate with anyone other than ourselves. Cool. Councillor Guy.
Thank you, Councillor Guy. <coughs> All right. Nothing to add. And sorry. Oh, Councillor Body. Uh, at, at the last workshop, I raised the issue of access, and I know to say, and you've included that. Thank you. In uh, correspondence with Rose Press yesterday, I think we're trying to get a meeting of the access group on the 12th of May, and Aidan's going to get an invitation. So, thanks, Aidan. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, uh, this morning, uh, Kevin gave us, gave us a good, pretty good overview of the strategy, strategy going forward with the um, with the shovel ready money um, available for the CBD. So uh, that still will align quite well with the consultation process going up the committee. Notwithstanding, there will be some urgency getting on with some aspects of it. Cool. That'd be fair yeah. comment. Yep. Yeah, fit in, fit in nicely. Mm -hmm. yeah, correct, Councillor Williamson. Okay, very good. Thank you, Aidan. Nothing final you want to add? No. The, the co consultation time frame? We're, we're hoping to commence next week. Next There's week. still some maps I'm editing, and I'm getting the online platform up and ready. So um, yep. there may be a chance we push that back a week, but at the moment we're hoping for next week. And okay. um, as soon as I get those ready, Thursday I'll know. I'll let stakeholders know that it's coming. Cool. All right. Number one and two there, Councillor. Taylor, moved but seconded by Councillor Park. Thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thanks, Aidan. Thank you very much. Four point five two Rangi Turtle Pool membership fees. Tina. Um, not, um, Scott. Oh, Scott. <coughs> afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon. Right, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, so um. Uh, Pre-COVID, it's quite a while ago. Um, I presented it in a workshop to um, to you guys around uh, implementing memberships for the Turangi Turtle Pools to try to align them with the AC bars. Um, so anything outside of the the paper, I'm not sure if we've got any questions around that. But yeah, so I've, I've put in the formulas, what I propose. Yeah. Um, we've got the software, we're all ready to go. Um, so any questions? Okay. Any questions here? I'll look to my uh, two ringy uh, councillors. Um, any questions <laughs> here? Uh, Councillor Mack. Um, so, yep, at the TTCB we discussed this and we actually all thought it was a really good idea. So we um, we think it's right to bring it into alignment and obviously the more you use it, the discount you get. Yep, so, yeah. cool. Okay, thank you Councillor Mack. All right, um, any other questions for Scott? No, uh, do I have a mover? Uh, please, that recommendation uh, is approved. Councillor, moved by Councillor Max, seconded by Councillor Kingy. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against, carried. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. 4.6, establishment of an ad hoc code of uh, con conduct committee. Tina. Okay. So I'd just like to take the item as read, but just note that this is a procedural item to establish the code of conduct committee. Um, just in the event that the matter um, is determined to be material. So we've got one um, set up and established if, if it's needed. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any questions of Tina regarding this process? I have a mover, please. Moved by Councillor Kingy, a second by Councillor Westerman. All those in favour, please say aye. Is against? Carried. Item number 4.7. <coughs> Electoral system for 2022 and 2025 triennial elections. Um, again, Tina, you this again. Is a, this is a wee bit of a procedural item. Um, just wanted to note on page 54 um, B and C at the top of the page that those dates 2020 should actually be 2021. So my apologies um, for that. Sorry. To, uh... So under B, 28th of February is 2021. Oh, yeah. Yep. And May is 2021 as well. Okay. Cool. Uh, so this is really just determining um, whether you yeah. use first past the post or single transferable vote um, in the local body elections. Um, first past the post is the most prevalent one. I think there was about 13, 12 or 13 who used STV local councils last, um, last elections. Right. Okay. I'll probably look to my deputy mayor here, who's experienced both. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, 
Pe people absolutely hate it. They don't understand. And there's not probably going to be another DHB election, so mm. people won't have the confusion of two right. separate systems next time. So if we mm. stick with first past the post, it'll be very clear. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rankin. Any other questions? No. Moved by Councillor Park. Have a seconded by Councillor Guy. Thank you. Um, all those in favour, uh, please say aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you, Tina. Council engagements, 4.8. Uh, so just want to add on to that, Your Worship, uh, workshop on the 18th of August from 10 to 11 on the Class 4 Gambling um, by all. Yep, got that, Tina. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else got anything to put on there? No. Received the information. Moved by Councillor Westerman, seconded by Councillor Leonard. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Uh, 4.9, receipt of the final statements of intent. Afternoon, Jess. Afternoon. Jessica Sparks. Yes. Correct? Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I got that right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> welcome back, Jess. Oh, well, not welcome back, but welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Same person. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> same All right, Jess, the floor is yours. Um, I'll just take the item as read. If anybody Pretty has procedural. any questions about the statements of intent? No, we've all read them and understand them. So, uh, cool. Uh, thank you very much, Jess. So, that's the Taupo Airport Authority, Waikato Lass, Bay of Plenty Lass, Local Government Funding Agency, the bank. All right, thank you. Do I have a, a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Leonard, seconded by Councillor Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you very much, Jess. 4.10, members, uh, members' report. Uh, Councillor um, Williamson. don't actually have any under my environmental portfolio, but I did attend the um, Turing, Tongaru Turing Community Board meeting last month and the Kinloch Community Association public meeting with Yvonne uh, last couple of weeks ago. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Councillor Park? Um, yeah, pretty pretty light month, um, Your Worship. We've had a couple of economic development catch-ups. Um, as a committee member attended the inaugural Taupo East Rural Representative Group meeting, which was well attended. Uh, and, uh, and from a youth perspective, I had children at home for the school holidays, so there you go. Um, and also um, yeah, looking forward like. to uh, Tech Week events this week. Um, and also just note that Tokal Pathways are holding a job career expo this evening at the Great Lakes Centre from 5 to 7, which is not just aimed for youth, it's aimed for young adults as well into their 20s. And everyone's welcome to attend that. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Park. Councillor Taylor. In terms of sport and recreation, uh, continuing to work with the swim squads, um, uh, Taupo Swim Club uh, with Scott. Uh, I've got another meeting coming up later this week just to advance that. That's progressing well, and I think we'll, we'll get a, um, a mutually beneficial resolution to that. Um, that's all in sport and recreation for me. Uh, community safety, we've got a meeting coming. <laughs> you talk about Tom. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Truman. Um, just Mangikino, just big congratulations to the organisers of Mangikino Lake Hawk. You had a phenomenal, phenomenal um, uh, events that I have never ever seen the town that busy in my whole life. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, the people that go to Hawk say that it rivaled Whangata one. So, yeah, big congratulations to them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Truman. Councillor Westman. All good. Councillor Rankin? Um, as Anna said, we've had some economic development catch-ups and a lot is happening in the district with economic development at the moment. But as I said this morning, a lot of it's commercially sensitive. The great thing is that there are a lot of jobs on the horizon across a variety of industries. So while we can't talk about the details of that, it's looking good. Mm, good. Thank you very much, Councillor Rankin. Councillor Mack? So nothing on the environment portfolio. But as I said this morning on the new steering group for Turangi with the new projects coming. We've got three projects now moving forward. Great. And that's going to be a really good thing for us. Awesome. Councillor Leonard. 
Uh, just reiterating what Councillor Park said, we had our um, inaugural Total Rural East Committee meeting. Um, it was really well attended by those people at River Road, and thank you to them for their attendance. Uh, it was wonderful to host the chair elect for Fonterra here in Taupo. That was a bit of a, a great thing to have happen here. Um, just a little bit con of concern out there um, for our lifestyle people, which there are many around the Taupo district, um, their feed situation, the cost and supplies seem seeming to become quite an issue for them. Just a heads up. Cool. Thanks, Councillor Lennon. Councillor Kingy? Oh, thanks. Um, just uh, s in terms of community safety, yeah, we've got a uh, got our first meeting coming back up, so nothing really to report there. But I just wanted to support what uh, Councillor Truman said about the the um, the lake hop uh, for Mangakino. Massive event, and I think we need to ensure that we support that event into the future because it was a stunning success. Thank you, Councillor King. Councillor Guy. Um, just um, again, just reiterating uh, what uh, Councillor Rankin has uh, discussed with regards to meeting with the EGLT chair. Um, obviously, um, that's a monthly meeting, um, and preparations are underway for the next three years for their budgets and work streams. Um, um, focus is certainly outward looking, working closely with NZTE and on some of these um, projects that are confidential but have a huge benefit to uh, Taupo if they are successful and the board is keen to meet with council um, on a governance to government basis as discussed earlier this morning. Um, I met with the Kinloch Marina board uh, just to um, had a presentation with them. Um, attended the business after five in Turangi last night and we have a um, also attended the um, presentation by Minister Jackson of the $722,000 to our Pathways um, project and again um, we have the Kinloch representative group meeting on Thursday. Cool. Thank you Councillor Guy. Councillor Body? All good. Thank you. Sorry Your Worship, can I just um, can I just thank the staff for their tireless work during lockdown and um, the announcement of the $21 million for our CBD revitalisation project? Yeah, I'd uh, just like to endorse that um, and, and thank the staff, everyone that's been involved in that um, and our thanks to central government, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, to get uh, $21 million for our CBD is incredible. $5.8 million for our airport. Um, 722,000 for our young ones to employ them um, and you know there's been external organisations that have been the recipients Geo, uh, Geo Tech, mm -hmm. Geo, Geo 40, 40 sorry uh, 15 million you know so you know we have been advocating strong uh, as a team and with our, alongside our staff Enterprise Great Lake Topol and uh, we've been successful and having uh, returned from Wellington last week uh, has been noticed down there by some several other councils, but uh, I didn't have to shout the bar or anything, so don't worry. But <laughs> but um, you know we uh, it's a lot of hard work going with that, and it doesn't go unnoticed. If you could just take back to the team, and the SLT, and staff there this afternoon. So um, just um, uh, uh, thank you, thank you all. It's uh, going to be a very very busy district going forward. Okay, no other councillor, councillor King, happy to move. Yep. By seconded by Councillor Truman uh, that we receive all the members' reports. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Right. That is it. Uh, the public part of the meeting is closed. And do I have a mover into confidence? Thank you, Councillor Park. Seconded by Councillor Williamson. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against? Okay.